welcome to a new episode of Cal TV at the Movies. I'm Selena Sanchez, and I'm sitting here with special guest star Jason Reitman, who brought you Juno, Thank You for Smoking, and now Up in the Air. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? I'm awesome. Good, because you are awesome. I saw your movie, Aww. and I... You got to be meaner. I, I don't want to tell you how to do your job, but... I need to be mean? Yeah, you're being way too generous right at the top of the interview. But, um... <laughs> I, the key but it's very is, sincere, I assure you. No, you got to open with the top stuff and by the end be like, that's why you know I liked your movie. You know, just, and just give that much. Oh, but see, that's how I'm different. Okay. okay. We'll, see how, we'll see how far this positive angle takes you. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to cry later. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so there was one quote that I found very interesting. Mm -hmm. We are not swans. We are sharks. Right. How much do you believe that's true? I don't know if I believe it, but I definitely think about it. You know, that comes from this whole speech that George Clooney makes in the movie about emptying your life. That we basically fill our life with bullshit. And that uh, for life to be cleaner and for it to be better, you have to empty it not only of everything you have, but every one you have. That the heaviest elements of our life are the relationships and the negotiations that we have with other people. This is where the backpack comes in. And exactly. His. So. Do I believe all of that? No, I have very fruitful relationships in my life. I have an incredible wife. I have a beautiful daughter. I get to do for a living what I love. I have a very full life. Uh, but that doesn't mean every once in a while I wonder what it would be like to suddenly have nothing. Not in a harmful way, in actually uh, an exhilarating way. What it would be like. Be rid of responsibilities. Yeah, to, like, to just walk through an airport, just hop on a plane and land in who knows what, who knows where, have nothing, have nobody. Um, there's something almost exciting about that. Mm -hmm. So the film has to do with a lot of really heavy themes, and it's mm -hmm. uh, technology, yeah. re uh, the recession, yeah. and all of them really relevant to our modern day. Was that a coincidence? Because I know, I think you started writing this six years ago? Yeah, I started writing the movie actually seven years ago, because it took me six years to write and a year to make the movie. So no, when I was writing the movie, we were in the midst of an economic boom. And I was writing it basically as a corporate satire. And as I wrote the movie, the world changed. The economy changed. And all of a sudden, we were in one of the worst recessions on record. So mm -hmm. uh, my approach to the firings in particular completely changed. And instead of having comedic scenes with actors, I decided to use real people who had lost their jobs in St. Louis and Detroit to play the characters. How was that watching or hearing their story? Heartbreaking. Because we, we, we basically put an ad out in the paper. We got hundreds of responses. And we put 60 people on film. And to he hear each individual story, because we'd interview them for about 10 minutes before we fired them on camera. And for about 10 minutes, they would talk about how they lost their job, who they told first, and mostly what it's like to search for purpose, not when they're your age, but when they're in the middle of their life. And they basically thought they knew the steps uh, and what was going to, you know, kind of what awaited them. And they had a certain security in just doing a certain job and living in a certain city. And when everyone who does what you do is fired, um, and is all, everyone's looking for the same job, everything, I was going to say, goes up in the air. And I didn't mean that as a pun. But um, you really have to take a hard look at how you plan on living the rest of your life and what is going to make you happy. And r most importantly, what gives you a sense of purpose? Why do you wake up in the morning? Why get out of the bed? And it usually revolves around your kids and your family. Yeah, although if you can't provide for your kids and your family, um, it, it, that becomes even more difficult. So uh, to hear these stories, each one being slightly different, but every one of them being harrowing, uh, made for very tough days, and we did days of it. Wow. So there was one scene where a woman says she wants to commit suicide. Was yeah, that, in that was an actress. Uh, oh, yeah, but did that come from something that was real? No, no, that, that, uh, that was fiction. Uh, not to say that there isn't a lot of that, uh, but that was fictionalized. So technology. I saw the airport kind of as a metaphor mm -hmm. for the technology. How intertwined are you with, I mean, do you have a certain perspective of how technology is taking a turn now? Yeah, I mean, for me it has to do with the major theme of the film, uh, which is connection. We're living in a time where we think we're connected to more people than ever before, because you have a thousand friends on Facebook you think that you're connected to all these people, people who live all over the world. Uh, but what we rarely do is have real connection, where you talk to people, look them in the eyes. And uh, I'm afraid that all this technology, and I'm just as guilty, 
I text yeah, all the Facebook. time. Uh, no, I never got into Facebook, but I love Twitter, and I Twitter all day. And I, uh, I feel that it gives us a false sense of connection, which is scarier than not feeling connected. Right. Even though we may have 300 friends, how many are you actually? How many do you know actually intimately? And what is a life that doesn't have a sense of community? And that's what Ryan's going through. Uh, and in the airport, it gives a metaphor for being disconnected and connected at the same time. If having lots of friends on Facebook gives you a false sense of community, airports give you a false sense of place. When you're in an airport, you think you're everywhere at the same time. Every airport you can be dropped into, you know where your Starbucks is, you know where your Hudson News is. where you're Yeah, so all these, uh, you think you're everywhere where you're in fact nowhere. Mm -hmm. So Ryan Bigham, he's, right? he's a very ironic character and very complex mm. in the way that he tries to console people, but at the same time he cuts everyone off. Mm -hmm. Was I know Up in the Air is uh, adapted from the book. Yeah. So how much of the book was brought into the film and how much of you or your own experience was put into Ryan? Well, I, Ryan is definitely within the book. And uh, in the book, he fires people for a living, and he collects air miles religiously. Uh, but uh, I feel like in my screenplay, Ryan has evolved to take on a lot of my character traits. And a lot of the questions that I have uh, are answered through his character. So uh, while his job is to comfort people and to try to fire them in his, uh, with as much ease as humanly possible, really, the movie became, while the book is about a man losing it, the book, uh, sorry, the book is about a man losing it, the movie's about a man who finds it. And um, it became a way for me over the course of six years to explore my great questions in life. Awesome. You want to do me a favor and look into the camera and tell everyone to watch Cal TV because you like us? <laughs> Hi, my name is Jason Reitman, and you should watch Cal TV because I like you. Awesome. He now automatically is. Part of the team of Cal TV. We have a button. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching Cal TV and look up Up in the Air. It's a movie coming out December 2009. Please check it out. Um, that's it for me. I'm Selena Sanchez. I'll see you guys later.